yesterday, a bit of housekeeping, I'm going to start with this. Yesterday, we discussed the scintillating prospect of Diego Costa joining Everton. Now, I mean, far be it from us to report hearsay on deal or no deal. We're all strictly about the facts, which means we've got to correct the record. Jim White has poured icy cold water on the rumour, oh. telling his TalkSport show, I heard from the very top at Everton yesterday, as Diego Costa to Everton was doing the rounds, you can forget that. That has been described as complete nonsense. Well, screw you, Jim White. So it looks like our low legitimacy rating was correct. Bringer of doom, that is, Jim White. He's good mates with Farhad Mashiri, isn't he? He, he has the inside line. Oh, does he? Line. Yeah, the, it, it got to a stage where you were thinking, if you're Farhad Mashiri, stop talking to him. He's, like, he's literally just given Jim White all the lines on Everton. I'm always interested in like the chicken and egg situation with Jim White here. Did he become friends with Mashiri before he was Deadline Day guy in the yellow tie? Or did Mashiri befriend him because he was the guy on Deadline Day wearing the yellow tie? Uh, Mina Raiola was on, on the show last year. I remember one time I was listening in and, um, and um, there was something, it was just before, his, before Lukaku's transfer. He's like, oh no, no, Lukaku's not going anywhere. And then like, three days later, Lukaku was gone. So not always getting the full facts from his guests on every story. I would give a low legitimacy rating to Jim White's ability to always get the facts ahead of a transfer. Or maybe he just picks his battles wisely. Like we said yesterday, Diego Costa going to Everton is not going to happen. So he's probably going to come out this morning and say, Neymar to Arsenal, probably not going to happen. And that's one from one for his Tuesday morning. Good day's work. <laughs> We do have a new wild rumour for you all to digest, though. <laughs> After being touted as a free agent with potential value during this very slot last week, West Ham, obviously paying attention, have been strongly linked with Italian striker Mario Balotelli. The odds of Balotelli joining West Ham United have been slashed after a flurry of bets in Italy. A little online digging shows there was some minor talk of Pellegrini bringing him to West Ham last summer. At the time, he said, I think Mario Balotelli is a very good player. He went here from Manchester City to Italy before I arrived, but I think he can play everywhere he wants. I know the character of Mario Balotelli. Everyone that is involved in football knows about him. Do we believe that this is a legitimate possibility and is this a good idea? Remember, they just lost a high-profile striker yesterday. Mm. Deal or no deal, Phil? No deal, and it's good to see West Ham have continued their uh, policy of going back five years to the transfer window. Like, they seem to be just going, like, you know, they signed players that were, yeah, that was a good signing, say, five years ago. Like Nazri, mm, Yeah, like I mean, they made some very good signings. Like I thought, I thought Arnautovic at the time was a good signing. Obviously, the part of yesterday, I thought Felipe Anderson was a fantastic signing yeah. last summer. I think Mario Balotelli would be a great signing for West Ham. West Ham United was created for the sole purpose of forming a club that Mario Balotelli could play for. They are a match made in heaven. These two football clubs make it happen, everybody. Please. The type of the type of team where it doesn't really matter where you finish in the league. You're not really going to go down apart from that one time and. Uh, <laughs> And it like it's just a couple of times high profile. <laughs> it would also help Declan Rice become full villain. You know, join the dark side, Declan Rice. He's done that with his international allegiance. Now they're just throwing another villain with him in Mario Balotelli. So proper evil, evil Jedi is. I could uh, Declan buy Rice. into it though. I do like the thoughts of Balotelli in a bubble bath being announced as a West Ham player. Mm. That I can see that happening. In fact, it's probably the most impressive image burned out of my brain at this moment. Let's uh, talk about Los Cuatro Fantásticos, the Fantastic Four, um, to bring you up to speed on Neymar. He has not shown up for training at Paris Saint-Germain. They say they are furious. Neymar's dad just came out saying, nah, it's all fine, the club knew he'd be late, they just got a little bit mixed up, don't worry about it. Then the PSG sporting director, Leonardo, yes, that Leonardo from Brazil, confirmed to French newspaper L'Equipe, oh, sorry, Le Parisien, that the player who has three years left on his contract is indeed up for sale if the price is right. PSG wants to rely on players who want to stay and build something big. We do not need players who would do a favour for the club by staying here, he added. Which is a get out of town. Uh, we don't really want to get bogged out in the... We want a three-team answer, right? Rank the top three teams most likely to sign Neymar from three to one, one being the most likely. Barcelona. From three to one. Number one. So Barcelona are going to be top of the list. Then you're probably thinking Real Madrid. And then that's... I, I don't even have, don't a have a 13. I don't have a 13. Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, say single Paris Saint-Germain is an option here, right? Okay, so there's number three. I, I think Barcelona is three. The single Paris Saint-Germain is two and Real Madrid is number one. Like, Neymar is locked in a legal dispute with Barcelona. 
Yeah, but they'll they all, they all be friends again. That, nothing solves legal disputes like money, and they've both got lots Messi, of money. Messi wants them. I'm not sure. I think this it basically is either Griezmann or Neymar. I can't see this nonsense idea of your four-team, four-person attacking quartet that you mentioned yesterday. I just can't see that working. Sell Pogba, sell Lukaku, get Harry Maguire and Neymar. Who's there that? is a sentence I never thought Who says I no? would hear. Alexis Sanchez says no. I mean, Alexis Sanchez... Gotta take my position there, uh, Neymar. Yeah, so... Yeah, well, okay. How do you no. sell no. Neymar the idea of moving to Manchester United? Well, the biggest club in the world when he was a kid, for a while. He would walk all over Solskjaer. Solskjaer wouldn't know what to do to handle this. Perfect move. This, this is the guy that cost uh, 500 grand for one flight for, for Barcelona a couple of years ago because he had to fly his entire entourage across the Atlantic Ocean at one point. Like, this is not I the mean, sort they could have hired a plane cheaper. They probably could have. Maybe I'm kind I of. I think like, all those stories are like uh, he's in the Tyson zone where you can say anything about him and everybody believes it to be true. So I, I think there's a lot of stuff around Neymar that probably isn't true. The bit where he's not working that hard probably is true at the minute. What do Manchester United not need at this particular moment in time is somebody who's not a hard worker. As, who's uh, going to sell all the shirts now? Pogba's gone, Owen. You're not thinking this through like a glazer. Put your glazer hat on. Who's going to buy the Who's going to buy the Rashford shirts? The Jesse Lingard shirts? Those Scott McTominay shirts ain't going to sell themselves, Owen. <laughs> it comes back to the most important quote in the history of television, which is Dwight Schrute in the office saying, "When I'm confused about whether or not to do something, I ask myself, would an idiot do that thing? And if an idiot would do that thing, I do not do that thing." Manchester United, do not do that thing, which is signing Neymar. It is the most idiotic piece of business you will do this summer, and it will take a club already in turbulence and shake it even further. So it's likely then. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying there's a chance. <laughs> there's Can you imagine chance, if yes. they did sign Neymar? United fans would be over the moon. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Tommy's like, no, he wouldn't. But they would. As soon as he started playing, doing a few tricks, they'd be like, oh, look at that. We've got somebody who's good again. Like, put him on top of the grand piano that Alexis Sanchez played and do keep you up, he's there. Yeah. Well, he'd probably dry home, but... Uh, no. <laughs> other news. Liverpool fend off Barcelona and Real Madrid to win the transfer race for 16-year-old Harvey Elliott, the youngest player ever to play in the Premier League. Briefly, Phil, is this something for Liverpool fans to get excited about? So I've seen some Liverpool fans getting upset that they are just signing these teenagers at the moment. And they're like, you know, City aren't signing teenagers. Why aren't Liverpool going after the big names? City are signing teenagers. They just don't hear about it because that's not the only thing they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. You got to mix it. But uh, I haven't seen much of them. I, I remember we did a Fulham game last season, and there was the possibility of him coming on to become the youngest player. I know eventually he did after Fulham had been officially relegated. But uh, you know, he, he certainly is one for the future, and. You know, Klopp, the, the general kind of feeling this season is Klopp is going to give a few of the younger players a chance to impress. But it, it seems like a, a pretty decent piece of business. As you say, not exactly headline grabbing in the way that, oh. say, Rodri from Manchester City is, but stop comparing yourself to Manchester City perhaps yeah. and actually look at what you've got. Napoli are interested in signing uh, Hamas from Real Madrid as well as Inter Milan's Argentine striker Mauro Icardi. Should a Premier League team hijack either deal? I think. Manchester United could do worse pieces of business than getting on board the Mario Cardi train. Again, it kind of flies in the face of a bit of turbulence that might come with <laughs> the <laughs> Neymar. There's plenty of turbulence attached to, to Mario Cardi, uh, so potentially that kind of uh, scuppers that entirely. But I think yes is the answer to that question. Yeah, he's a great striker, uh, but he does come with a lot of baggage. Uh, media, sorry, Marca and the French media are reporting that Everton are monitoring Barcelona's transfer movements and hope to swoop to pick up Malcolm when the Catalans move to secure Neymar or Griezmann or both, do we believe this story is legitimate? Is it a good idea? What impact would he have at Goodison? Who cares what Jim White has to say? Yeah, the, he was meant to go to Roma. This was all done and then he went to Barca at, at last minute and it's barely kicked a ball for them. But, yeah, he's, he's definitely an upgrade on what... Like, Everton have those kind of players where, especially in attack, where on their day they're brilliant but they just don't have enough of those days. Finally, very quickly, Wayne Rooney says uh, Jadon Sancho should not join Manchester United. He thinks he should stay at Borussia Dortmund. He has to ask himself whether he would get the playing time he gets in Dortmund when he moves to England, or would he just sit there on the bench? Playtime is so important to a young player like Jadon. If he gets the most playing time in Dortmund, he should stay there. Is Wayne Rooney correct? 
Yeah. Well, I think it's pretty easy. I think the, giving Jadon Sancho the opportunity to join Manchester United now is like saying to him, would you like to come and ruin your career? If, you, if so, come join us at Manchester United. Someone if not, part of stay at Borussia Dortmund. Solution. Yeah, he's doing all right. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Borussia Dortmund is clearly the place for him at the moment. Manchester United is not that solution. But you're right. There will come a time when Manchester United will be the place to be. Now is not that time. Well, you could be the young kid who is the foundational piece that they use to build on. Uh, Daniel James is going to do that. Well, he's a start. Uh, Jaden Sancho next on that list. All right, that is all we've got time for this morning on O2B AM. If you missed anything, you can catch the, co- but you can catch the podcast back wherever you get your podcasts, uh, the Go Loud app, or indeed on offtheball.com. Great places for you to listen to the Off The Ball podcast. You can watch our highlights over on our YouTube channel, which now has 50,000 subscribers and growing all the time. Some great stuff coming up on OTB Sports Radio across the day. George Dockrell from Half Nine, the Irish cricketer, joined uh, Owen and Johnny in the studio in April. Um, we've got Off The Bench coming your way from 12. Paul McGrath talks about the Jack Charlton era. That's OTB Gold today from 1. Paul McGinley on the 2019 Irish Open. The football show, Dermot Gallagher's Premier League year is coming your way at uh, 3 o'clock. That's Rings Ends, Dermot Gallagher. Andy Lee's uh, pound for pound top 10 heavyweights at 4 o'clock. Pat Nevin talks the Women's World Cup and Chelsea's summer. And then Jason Sherlock's life story is our gold from 6 o'clock this evening before we're back live at 7. And then uh, the dad cast is coming your way at 9 o'clock tonight. But uh, in the meantime, you can check us out on offtheball.com forward slash radio. You can uh, tell your Alexa to play OTB Sports Radio and she'll do it. Or you can get us on the Go Loud app and we're also on TuneIn as well. We'll see you tomorrow morning at around about half past seven as ever. If you want to get in touch with us, just use the hashtag OTBM or hit us up on Twitter. Good luck. <laughs>